So, after all of the stuff we've already talked about, I think it's time for another movie review. We haven't done one since Detective Pikachu, so I figured it was time. And today, we are going to talk about and review the movie Super Mario Brothers, or Super Mario Brothers the Movie. So, there's a lot to unpack with this movie to start with. If you've ever heard anything about this movie, it's quite infamous. And hardcore Mario fans absolutely hate it. But there is some people who actually have fondness, or I guess you could say nostalgia, for this movie. Released in the summer of 1993, this movie was not, did not do the best. It did not do the best. A number of reasons why, as to why it was pretty low in quality was because of the troubled production that it went through. If you have um, ever um, read about like all the bad things that went wrong with this movie, you need to take some time and read about it. I could make an entire show just based on the production of Super Mario Bros. the movie through all the trouble it went through. But we're not going to talk about that today. We're just going to talk about how the movie actually was. So, this is a lot to unpack, so bear with me. So, let's get started. So, the movie starts, um, it starts out by explaining life was pretty good. You know, you have these two, like, I guess you could say 16-bit dinosaurs <laughs> at the beginning. They're just munching, they're like, ah, life's pretty good, you know. And then, boom, a meteor hits, and not only does it... Um, wipe out life on Earth, but it also splits the two dimensions, the dimensions that would become the humans and the dimension that would become the dinosaurs. So then, by the way, there, this is going to be spoilers um, from here onward. Uh, that first part, you, you know, doesn't really count, but uh, from here onward, there's going to be spoilers. If you haven't seen this movie, of course, it came out in 1993, so you had plenty of time. So, a mysterious egg is left on the front steps of a Catholic church, and it's found and brought in, and then it fast-forwards to present day. So, then we meet our main characters, Mario Mario and Luigi Mario. Yes, it is canon that his last name is Mario and his first name's Mario. Same goes for Luigi. First name Luigi, last name Mario. And, you know... Appropriate enough, they're plumbers in Brooklyn, New York. We are then introduced to Daisy, who is pretty important to the plot of the movie. Um, Luigi actually falls in love with her, and they end up going on a little date along with Mario and his girlfriend. And also, if I forgot to mention, Mario and Luigi are in competition with a mafia-ran company uh, ran by a... Um, set of characters known as uh, Scapelli, or more specifically, a man named Anthony Scapelli, which he's not really important to the plot of the story immediately, but it's just one of those things, so let's get back on track. Anyway, Daisy is digging for dinosaur bones under the Brooklyn Bridge, and she's a student of NYU. Anyway, the Scapelli's basically sabotage her dig site um, and long story short we eventually meet Iggy and Spike who knock out the Mario Brothers and kidnap Daisy. The Mario Brothers wake up and soon they end up stumbling upon and finding themselves in the other universe where dinosaurs evolved into basically humanoids. We then meet normal, everyday Dennis Hopper. <coughs> I mean, uh, King Koopa. King Koopa is a tyrannical leader that basically leads this other dimension. You know, I never realized how extensive this movie really was. Anyway, Mario and Luigi spend a good half of the movie trying to find Daisy, which they eventually do. And, of course, King Koopa's plans is to merge the two worlds and rule them both. And to do so, they need a meteorite fragment in which Daisy happens to have on a necklace around her neck. 
Eventually, in the end, the two worlds do end up merging and King Koopa soon finds himself right in the middle of Brooklyn. He then uses his handy dandy Super Nintendo Super Scope, uh, I mean, devolution gun, and turns it on Anthony Scapelli, who he turns into a chimpanzee. Soon after, the two worlds are then unmerged, and Mario and King Koopa then have a final, well, confrontation. And then we are introduced to the classic Babam, which Mario holds, everyone fears, as he winds it up and it begins walking towards him. The little fella even has Reebok on him, like on his feet. Now, if that isn't product placement, I don't know what is. Eventually, Mario is able to use the devolution gun on King Koopa, and of course, he ends up turning into a Tyrannosaurus Rex thing, which he evolved from, and he defeats him in the end, and that's pretty much the movie. I mean, of course I could go in more detail about the movie, but you really have to sit here and think, is it worth going in detail about? Of course, there's the whole troubled production thing that you could talk about for a good solid 10 to 20 episodes, and, you know, of course... John Leguizamo and Bob Hoskins, they both got drunk during the production of this movie. But honestly, what I think about this movie, for the nostalgia factor, when I was a kid, I absolutely loved it. But as an adult, not so much. So the question is, is it worth watching today? Well, that's really up to you to decide. I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world, but it's definitely worth watching once or twice. So overall, I'd say give it a watch. You might actually enjoy it. Then again, of course, if you don't enjoy it, then you don't enjoy it. So that's my review of Super Mario Bros. the movie. Uh, we will probably go in other details about this movie at a later date. We may do more videos about it. Of course, I hope you enjoyed this review, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the bell if you want notifications of when we do more awesome videos. And until next time, I'll see ya.